This is an example of circuit that allows you to use the TP4056 to charge the battery while it is in use. We have uh, a load here on the right, which is uh, a motor in this case, but it can be whatever, like a Raspberry or uh, an Arduino. And the way this works is pretty simple. When the USB is connected to the module, we have 5 volts on this line, which is connected to the gate of this uh, P-channel MOSFET. This works as a switch. So when uh, we have uh, 5 volts on the gate, it means that uh, the switch basically is uh, open. So we are disconnecting the battery from the load. But we still power the load through this line over here, which has 5 volt. It goes through this Schottky diode and it gives power to the load. Uh, be mindful that uh, we will have um, uh, a voltage drop uh, from this Schottky diode. You should, should choose this Schottky diode so that uh, the voltage drop doesn't affect your uh, circuit. And uh, when we disconnect the USB, we have 0 volt on this line, meaning that the gate is low. So our MOSFET acts as a closed switch, meaning that uh, our battery is connected to the load. One last thing that I forgot to mention is that we use this Schottky diode here in order to avoid uh, activating the gate when we don't have the USB connected to the module. This is because the, the power might flow from this line and back to the gate. This is what uh, this Schottky diode is for. With the Schottky diode, the power cannot flow backwards. And this is it. I will build this circuit uh, minus the, the switch and the voltage booster because uh, it's totally unnecessary for explaining the inner workings. And we'll see how it works as far as uh, my understanding goes. Also, if you see any error or um, I'm doing something wrong, please let me know in the comments as uh, it could help uh, me, but also everybody else. Okay, so we can start build uh, this thing. We have the charging module connected already to a battery, which is unprotected. Then we have uh, our MOSFET. This is an IRF4905. We also need our pull-down resistor. This is a 10 kilo ohm resistor. And we connect it uh, between the, the ground and the, the USB power of the charging module. Then we can take our load, which in, in this case it's a PWM with a motor. And we connect the negative uh, to ground and the positive uh, must go on the third pin of the MOSFET. The MOSFET has three pins. This is the first, the second and the third. The first is uh, the gate, the second is the drain and the third is the source. We want to attach this to the source. Then we need our shot key diode. Just remember that um, this is the anode and this is the cathode, so plus and minus for the connection, because if you connect it uh, on the wrong side, the current will not uh, be able to flow. We can connect the anode, so the plus to the, the gate of the MOSFET, and the, the negative side, we want to put it on the third pin of the MOSFET. Then we have to connect uh, the power out output of the battery from the module, uh, to the, the second pin of the MOSFET, which is the drain. And then uh, we have still to connect uh, the power from the USB of the module to the, the gate of the MOSFET, which is the first pin. Now, if we leave the circuit as it is, we can turn on our load and we are getting power from the battery. We can also see what's going on in the MOSFET with a multimeter. So, for example, if we measure the, the voltage between uh, the gate and the source, which is the first pin of the MOSFET and the third one, we can see we have a negative voltage of 4.19, which is uh, below the threshold for this uh, pin MOSFET, meaning that uh, it acts as a closed switch. 
So it is conducting between uh, the second and third pin. We can also measure uh, uh, the voltage between uh, the second and the third pin, which is uh, source and drain. And we can see that is zero, meaning this is conducting and the switch is closed. We will see that uh, when we connect uh, the USB power to the module, we will have a, a voltage difference between uh, the source and the drain. So now if we connect power to the module, with, uh, this is uh, equivalent to connect it, the, connecting the USB to the, to the module. We can see that uh, the module detected that uh, the battery is uh, charged, so it's full. And we can also take a couple of measurements to be sure that everything is working correctly. The first thing that we can measure is uh, the voltage between um, the source and the gate of the MOSFET. And we can see that it's 0 0.31 volts. This is uh, a voltage that is higher of the gate source threshold which means that is in, in this case this MOSFET is uh, open. If you remember before we measured the uh, uh, minus 4.5 volts between uh, the source and the gate and according to the datasheet that uh, voltage is uh, low enough to cause the switch to be activated so to be closed and allows the flow of current from the battery to our load. In this case uh, that voltage is uh, too high and uh, it causes the, the switch to be open and so the our load is getting the power from uh, the USB. I don't know if you can hear it but you can also hear the voltage drop uh, when we disconnect the, the 5 volt from the motor noise. which is also another indication that everything is working. We can also check the voltage between uh, the drain and the source. And we should have a voltage difference of minus 0.5 in this case, because uh, the voltage on the second pin where I have uh, the red probe is lower than the one in which I have the uh, black probe. So everything seems to be working correctly. We can also check that uh, we have current flowing through the diode and we should be able to see the, the, wall, the forward voltage drop just by measuring uh, the two sides of the diode, which is in this case is 0.3 volt. And also, and the way in which we get this uh, 0.5 uh, between source and drain should be we get the 5 volt from the USB power. We subtract uh, uh, the voltage that we get from the battery, which is in, in this case is 4.224. And we arrive at uh, almost 0 0.8 vol uh, volt. And then we still need to, to subtract the forward voltage drop from the diode, which is 0 0.3. And we get to 0 0.5. There might be also a slight difference because if I remember correctly, uh, this also has an internal resistance. So it might be a little bit lower, but it should be in the range. And everything appears to be working correctly. I also left this off camera like this charging while it works for like a couple of hours nothing has happened the module doesn't get hot the battery doesn't get hot so everything should be working uh, a couple of final checks that we can do to make sure that everything is working is uh, to monitor the voltage on the second pin so it's the one that is coming out from the battery uh, we can see here that we have by probing the second pin of the MOSFET and ground, we have 4.224 volts, which is okay for this battery. It should never go above 4.2 volts. Otherwise, you risk damaging the battery and shortening its, its lifespan. So, so far, so good. Another thing that we can check 
is uh, the voltage we get on the third pin, so the one that is going to our load. We can see that is, it is uh, 4.7. We can get this by taking the voltage from the USB and subtracting the, the forward voltage drop of the diode. This is another indication that we connected everything uh, correctly. And we can also check the voltage on the first pin of the MOSFET and it should be 5 volts. The same that we have from the USB. which is 5 volts and that's it. If you are unsure on how you connected uh, everything, one thing you can do is charge the battery while you keep an eye on it and you can measure the voltage of the battery then maybe uh, run it for a long time while you watch it as it charged, also maybe put the battery in a place where if it catches fire, it's it's not going to do much damage. And uh, the voltage should never uh, go higher uh, than a, a certain threshold. Uh, this may vary based on the controller for the battery that you use or uh, uh, the circuit that you make, but it shouldn't never go beyond 4.2 volts. If it does, it means that you did uh, something uh, incorrectly and it might be dangerous so maybe rework your uh, your circuit and, and stuff uh, you can also check the temperature of the battery and uh, of the controller if nothing gets hot you probably connected it uh, right and if uh, stuff gets hot just disconnect everything and reconnect everything uh, and try to do it correctly this time.